good day. You are listening to Inspirato Projecto. This is the September 20th. This is the same date as the uh, the last podcast that I just had titled, I think it's called Yachtly Crew, with Yachtly Crew in Reno, something like that. Some of that takes place maybe on the 19th or 18th, but then a lot of it happens on the 20th on the way up here to Reno. I'm up here with a Yachtly crew. We're up here in Reno. I am at the... It's interesting. This says here Silver Legacy Resort Casino Reno, but we're actually at the El Dorado Resort. I'm right now at a place called the... The... What is this place called? Uh, this is called the, this is called the, I don't know, I just see a lot of Kino around here. Cafe Central? Cafe Central. Yeah, that's what we're at. Cafe Central. They gave us a food voucher here. I'm staying in room, I'm staying at room 939 tonight. 939, bunking up with David Bowie. Made sure to bring some uh, Yachtly crew cards down. We, uh, they said that we were going to have to do sound check at 7 o'clock, but now it looks like we don't have to do sound check until 8.45, I think that's what this mess, this most recent message just said. Let's see. Let's check out what these guys got to say here. 8.45, yeah, 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 yeah. So... Got a little bit of time right now. It is 6:22 p.m. I'm most likely going to. I just ordered a chicken sandwich. The coffee is delicious. I have a $25 food voucher. I, I shall read this for you now. El Dorado Resort welcomes Yachtly Crew. $25 food credit coupon. Circus v- Circus valid at El Jefe. The Habit Burger Grill and Sips. Silver Legacy. Valid at oh okay so I see now there are three different places three different uh, <coughs> casinos that all seem to be a part of the same same place I guess oh, okay so the, it's the El Dorado Resort and then they have three different casinos in there I think that's what it is the Circus Silver Legacy and El Dorado that's what it is so apparently I'm here in the Silver Legacy now so it's uh, good at the Pearl Oyster Bar Cafe Central which is where I'm at now. Flavors Buffet, Sips and Room Service Only. I don't know what that means. El Dorado Valid at, oh, so then there's the El Dorados. So there's a Circus Silver Legacy in El Dorado. So it's valid at Miles 24 Buffet, Hidden Pizza, and Fomine. Fomine, Fomine. Expires September 20th, 2018. Code 166. Doesn't say anything on, on here about me not being able to get liquor, but I don't know. Maybe I'll just maybe I'll just drink the uh, coffee. Maybe I'll just drink the coffee tonight. So far, we had a, a pretty simple load in. At first, it seemed like we were going to have to walk through all these different hallways. A guy named Eric showed us where we would have to load in, and then all the different hallways we'd have to walk through to get to the stage. And and he said that we weren't going to have any carts or anything. But we were very surprised. We were surprised by <coughs> some of the employees. Some of the employees who came down there, and they had a big old cart, and they put it on there. My gosh, that was fast! Holy moly! Holy moly! Uh, just more coffee, please. Thank you. This is crazy. All right, I'm going to, um, I don't know if I should just keep this running. Why not? Let's keep it running. Here we have some fries, some delicious fries. We're going to chomp into these. Chompy chomp, chomper chomperton. Chompy chomperton and associates. I think I need to smile more, I realize. I need to smile more. Not that I'm scowling. At least I hope not. I think sometimes maybe when... Uh, I'm very in, intent on something. It might come across as intense. It's 
So I'd really like to work on smiling a lot more. Smiles open the doors. Smiles open the doors. I've seen it happen. I've witnessed it with my own eyes, with my own good luck. I just might have to take the other half of this up, upstairs. Maybe they'll have a... Uh, maybe they'll have a... What do you call it? Fridge? Small fridge? I'm eating a large chicken right now. So, folks, there's still time. Uh, just it's time for you to come out, check out the show. It's for you. Um, it's free, it's gonna be fun. Thank you. Oh my god. Thank you. She just left an entire pot of coffee with me. She knows my kind. She knows my kind. Speaking of which, isn't it interesting how you get folks who are like, well, don't you say that about me, because that's stereotypical. Like, I don't know, let's say, just because I'm a skater doesn't mean that I do this, or whatever. And then you got folks who go, yep, you know us coffee drinkers, where there, there's that pride in identifying with that specific thing, yet it's weird. I noticed with those particular, some of those particular things, if, hmm, if it's pointed out to those people that they're doing that particular thing, they'll say not all of us do those things. And yet, and yet, if you point it out to them, they, you know, they might get offended. And they go, okay, why are you getting offended? Why? Is it because someone else is saying it? Um... Is it like if someone proclaims themselves as something? Can you? Is it all right for you also to proclaim them as that? Next question: If they proclaim themselves to be a specific thing, a specific identity, it's fine. That's up to them. However, the image that they're presenting uh, might even come off as something different. So, just because, for instance, uh, just because someone takes themselves seriously does not mean that everybody else has to bend to um, taking that person seriously. They're not required to do that, right? They're not. The, they're not required to do that. We are different definitions to everyone all the time. We're different definitions to ourselves all the time. So, you wrap up within that, the idea that we are these infinite beings. 
blinking in and out of existence. Uh, this identity thing that we're wearing is just an avatar anyway. It's not... It's not what we are. It's a sliver of what we are. And anyone who gets offended... Um... by someone else's definition of them. Like, for instance, okay, someone who gets angry with, or bothered or offended by someone else's definition of them, or what they see, I don't know if we're actually our, our, like, it's not, it's out of our hands. They're, they're giving us feedback, is what they're doing. They're giving us feedback on how um, they're giving us feedback on how our vibe is transmitting. And the feedback that we're getting um, that, of course, could be completely different feedback than, than the feedback we'd get from someone else. Um, because every person, um, because every person associates or relates to specific things of everybody else in the world. The, you know, getting offended part is simply them noticing a piece of themselves within that, perhaps a piece of themselves that they don't like, if they're trying to hide or whatever, and if it's called out, You know, they might get upset. But, you know, that's the beauty of it right there. Do we choose to get upset? Or do we choose to go, yeah, you know what? Um, I do relate to that. I do resemble that. And, okay, I embrace it. And, on the next thing, the, the fun power is in each and every single one of our hands. I carried this rainbow moonstone with me, and we passed by an awesome hotel called the Portal Hotel. So kick ass. So we got here to Brew Brothers. Started loading in, and and there was a girl there. She goes, "Hey, you guys, remember me? I was at the uh, whatever Johnny's Steakhouse. I served you guys. Well, apparently she served us." This girl happened to be one of our servers when we were in June Lake uh, a few days ago, you know, for the wedding. We had stopped at a restaurant. And a girl who served us, she remembered us. She happened to be out here in Reno with her friend. <clears throat> She's been out here for, I don't know, three days already, hanging out. And she just so happened to be walking past the place. Because we all, I'm sure we all gave her cards for Yachtly Crew. She's walking past, and then she sees the sign for Yachtly Crew. And as she's looking at that, someone out in front goes, Hey, yo, yeah, Yachtly Crew's in there right now. They're loading up. So she saw us, and there here we were. 
I mean, we could have arrived later. We could have arrived earlier. She could have not been out here. Um. Oh my gosh, there was another crazy, crazy thing. There's another. There was, there was a few of these extraordinary things that I just had to be quiet about. I wanted to record them, uh, but the battery had died. <coughs> I heard this amazing Abraham video the other day, and she was talking about how she was she was bringing up. She's at some place like I don't know, getting her hair done or something, uh, or getting her nails done or something, and she <clears throat> told everyone there about this amazing synchronicity, this crazy. It was like synchronicity within a synchronicity thing. And she didn't get any response from anyone. And she realized, okay, you know what? This is really not necessarily my target audience. These are not necessarily the people who, you know, I, I could expect something extraordinary like this from. And so that's what I realized when I'm confronted, not confronted, but I'm in the midst of hanging out with people who, Um, with hang out with mindsets that I hope this is not decaf. This is this is weak coffee. Is that what's going on? Whoa! Is this actually coffee? Let's see. Oh my God! That is some of the weakest coffee. So, oh man, I came here sp mostly because I wanted to drink coffee. Obviously, I wanted to eat. Anyway, the thing is, we came across these these various things, and I'm sure they'll come to me. I'm sure they'll come to me as to what what exactly those were. All I know is I'm looking forward to an intriguing night of rocking out here in Reno. Rob the drummer has to fly out tomorrow morning on an airplane at 8.30. He has to play a show in, I think, San Francisco or something? Uh, two shows with Highway Star, his band Highway Star tomorrow. I'm gonna see if maybe she'd get me a new coffee. Oh man, I'm, I feel good. I feel, you know, my belly is uh, is now full. Hmm. So, I guess that's the thing. Um, if you go, oh yeah, you know. It was great. I went up to this festival and I, you know, hung out with a bunch of nerds. And on the one hand, someone could choose to go, oh, well, how dare you call me a nerd? Blah, 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 blah. Or they can go, yeah, I'm a nerd. Yeah. That's me. That's what I do. Uh, it's. I'm wondering if maybe it has to do with the way in which someone says a particular thing as to whether the person receiving that information decides whether it's offensive or not. Like you can hear certain people in certain cultures calling themselves certain things. But if someone else who's not a part of that culture calls them those things. Oh, I'm good. You know what? This um, coffee, it kind of tastes watery to me. It's watery? Is, would it be okay if I had a new coffee? Yeah, of course. Is that, is that all right? I was just, I, it just, I don't know. I just, it just doesn't. Okay, yeah. No problem. But uh, real quick, could I see your tattoo real fast? Yeah. Oh. I'm just fascinated with tattoos. Did you, did you design that? I did not. That's a really that's a really cool one. Would it, did that hurt on your thumb? I hear it hurts uh, more it and it's just like right in the bone. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad? 
That is really cool. Do you have other tattoos too? I do have a couple of them. Yeah. Was that your first one? No, it's my last one. I just got this couple of ones. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. Cool. <laughs> Me and my sister got the same one. So is it is it true? Like as everyone says, like once you get that first tattoo, then you're like, oh, I gotta get another one. What's my next one? Yeah. It is. Yeah. Now is that truly gonna be your last one or no? I don't know. Yeah. I'm sure eventually I will. I mean, I don't want too many, but yeah. I probably will get some. So probably soon after you got there, were you already kind of thinking about what the next one yeah, might possibly be? I just don't know yet for sure. I wanted to do something for my son, but I don't know yet. I'm still thinking about it. I want to make sure I'm like dead set on it. Yeah, yeah. That is the thing, right? If you're going to get the tattoo, you're like, okay, this is going to be on with me yeah. forever. Yeah, I already have one that I kind of regret, so I'm like, I just want to make sure I don't regret it. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, what a what a wonderful gal. So she's going to go get me some new coffee, which is fantastic. So like for instance, if I go if I so if someone goes, "Oh, oh, here come those yacht rock dudes." Well, you know how those yacht rock dudes are. I wouldn't feel offended by that. I wouldn't feel offended by that. Uh oh. Here come, oh my goodness, thank you so much. Oh my gosh, thank you. Yeah, I think that does taste better. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Thank you, thank you. It's still kind of watery, but what? You can't, you can't break people's hearts by. Uh, just gotta, just gotta, just gotta, just gotta. Sometimes you just gotta grin it, grin and bear it, as they say. As they say. So if someone goes, oh, oh, oh here come those Yacht Rock dudes. Um, would I choose to get offended by that or not? Whether they were laughing or scowling. Either way, I'd be like, yeah, yeah, I'm that guy. Or, uh, let's see, if someone... I, I don't know, it's, it's just kind of... The power is in their hands if we give over that power to them. Do we really want to give away our power? What good, what value do we find in giving up our power? Hmm. I was thinking earlier today on the way up here, I was thinking about astrology, I was thinking about horoscopes. Uh, you know, oh, you know those Capricorns. Oh, you know those Sagittarius. Someone could look at that and go, hey, I'm offended. That, you know, no, 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 no. <clears throat> That's not me. But what if it does match up with you? What if those traits do match up with you? What if that does perfectly explain who you are and your things, what you do? I mean, the crazy thing is, no matter what, it's truly up to you. It's up to us. To decide what kind of value value system, what kind of definition we want to place on something. What kind of value do we want to put on that moment that we're spending? In that moment, what are we doing in that moment? For instance, this moment right now, this very, 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 very moment. Am I more concerned about intently getting some sort of message across? Am I more concerned with uh, 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 how loud I'm talking? Am I more concerned with how well I'm enunciating? Am I concerned with the future of once I publish this podcast? Or am I just... Or am I just very satisfied right now in this moment and completely trustworthy that no matter what comes my way, I can handle it. That I have everything I need right now in this very moment to handle what I need to handle.
in the way that I need to handle it. And added to that fact, I think once we step into that, into that power of going, yep, yep, you know, you own it, you own it, you center it, you center it, you own it, and you go, yeah, this is what's happening now. That's powerful. That is powerful. This is why people are enthralled with those who are doing their own thing. Because that person is so focused on what they love doing and what they're doing in that moment. So enthralled with that specific reality that they are creating and, 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 and imagining and immersed in in that moment. That person is so, so just diving deeply into it that other people look at them and they go, hey, wait a second. That person is so far more concerned with what they are doing in their own little moment right there than they are with anything else that's going on. Oh, yes. You know what? Can I put this into a little container? Yeah, of course. Because um, I think I'm going to go after I drink this. Thank you. Oh. She just asked those guys about dessert. Do I want dessert? Oh, my goodness. Okay, how about I put it on the table and then we'll grab the first get it. So I think I got eight or nine bucks left over on here. Do I want to get dessert? Hmm, hmm, hmm. So that's that's the that's the the interesting paradox, the beautiful oxymoron is that the more focused we are in what we are doing, no matter what, no matter what, as long as we step into that, that particular perspective and we own it. After all, what makes a better actor than a, a different actor in the Academy Awards or whatever? <laughs> because they take you there, right there with them. They're not trying to take you there with them. They're trying... They're, they're visualizing what they're visualizing in that moment. And you're so focused on it that everything else kind of falls in, kind of, it all pay, starts paying attention. That through line, that momentum. Someone who's very determined, <clears throat> even let's say someone who's very offensive, let's say Andy Kaufman, someone who's just like, just doing what they're doing, just being what they're being, it, it attracts attention. People turn in, they go, hey, what's that going on over there? They want to see more of what's going on. Not that any of us are ever required to be concerned about the feedback of others. However, a lot of us have been taught at a very young age to gain approval, gain approval, gain approval. So how do we do that? Try to f try to figure out. Okay, try to read. Okay, what's what's generally everybody thinking? What's the common? What's the common sense? What's the common? You know, I just want to kind of be in that flow with everyone else. Like what? What is that thing? I want to be in the safe zone. There is that brought up with that so it is a tricky thing <clears throat> when you get to the point you and then you come to the realization that yes you are the one who's moving forward you're the one you're the only one who's responsible for for bringing joy and excitement and fantastic circumstances into your reality experience you're the only one responsible for that no one else is required for that and no matter where you go, there you are. Of course, today is Uncle Arnie's birthday. And that's one of the phrases he taught me. Wherever you go, there you are. Another one is, a legend, I'm a legend in my own mind. Another one is, contribute or contaminate. These are, these are key things that I learned from Uncle Arnie through the years. And you know what? He seemed like a very happy guy. He wasn't rich. Um, 
you know, he was kind of eking out an existence, like all, like all many starving artists have in the past, as we, as we we can read about in the history books. We are truly the ones. We are truly the ones. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna pay for this. We're gonna talk more later. Wow. So I exited the uh, after eating my food. I, you know, I took the other half with me, cause I uh, I'm like I know I'm gonna get hungry later, and I was hoping I had a refrigerator up there that I could put it into, and I was walking out. And uh, there's a guy who's walking past, and he goes, would you like to donate your food to the homeless? And I said, yes. I said, are you homeless? He goes, no. He said, there's an, a lady out there who's like dying. She looks like a skeleton, and she's just out there. And he's like, and I want to you know, bring food to her. And I said, man, that is so cool of you. And... Uh, And he goes, uh, he's like, you'd be so surprised how many people don't want to help out. They look at you like, oh my God, how dare you ask me? And, and I'm like, man, that's crazy. He goes, yeah, a lot of times these people are just very, they're like, they're big fat people. And they're saying, no, how dare you? And. You know, he's like, well, I'm, you know, I'm, I, I'm trying everything I can to not say to them, oh, there's a special place for you in hell. Um, <laughs> uh, and uh, he's like, he's like, but you, he's like, there's a special place in heaven for you. I'll see you on a mountain, brother. And uh, I'm like, well, thank you. Thank you for helping out th that lady. Like, that's awesome, dude. Like, that, I'm not the hero here. He's the hero. He's, he's going... He's going around asking, just asking strangers if they have food for the, for the homeless. Like, that's freaking awesome. Why not? You know, in a lot of cases, people don't even eat their leftovers. I can't even say for certain that I was even going to eat my leftovers for crying out loud. So, you know, I maybe I would have eat my leftovers? Maybe I would not have. But the good news is, at least now, well, or at least in a little bit, there'll be a woman who, who really needs that food. And it's thanks to this ability that I had been given a free meal voucher It just, just phenomenal. Completely phenomenal. Here, check this out. Oops, that's not what I wanted you to hear. Wait, I wonder if our buddy... And welcome to Extra at the Movies, your ultimate guide to the film still in theaters and now available right in your hotel room. Movies like Solo, a Star Wars story based on the early days of the coolest space cowboy in the galaxy. A brand new adventure, a whole new cast, a young Han Solo approved by Harrison Ford himself. Well, before we started, I wanted to meet him because it yeah. didn't feel right to do it without sitting down with him. And I had lunch with him, and he was just the coolest, coolest guy. He was just super supportive, really gave us his vote of confidence, and it was great. <laughs> Power to the rear deflector seal. We definitely do. When do you know how to fly? 190 years old? You look great. Do we get it? Oh, I found it.
So that was our buddy, Mario Lopez. Our, uh... Ryan Reynolds oh. is back as the Merc with a mouth in Deadpool 2. And this time, he's fighting a new enemy played by Josh Brolin. He's also giving me another shout-out. That's what I'm talking about. You all know the drill! Intercept the convoy! All right, we're going to listen to music right now. So Mario Lopez, our buddy, he was on the screen. <laughs> our buddy. What? These guys want to charge me $10 to listen to music. What? You guys are crazy. No way, man. No way. Get me out of here. Get me out of here, dude. What? No, let's get out of here. No way. Out of here. Out of here. So that's the moral of the story. <laughs> What's the moral of the story, Kurt? What is the moral of that story? I guess that's up to you. I guess that's up to you. Moral of the story, that's up to you. Just know that if you feed a homeless woman, there's a special place for you on top of the mountain. And I'll see you there. Keep that in mind. Wow. I, I, uh, wow. Okay. First, I just want to say <clears throat> Anchor now has, ever since I downloaded Anchor 3, I didn't even see these over here. You can put, they, they added, they added some really cool songs, the uh, little interludes that you can stick uh, between the segments, which I love. So you just heard a new one as far as I'm, as far as I've heard. Uh, this this is a very, very interesting piece of usu, a piece of ubiquitous serendipity, serendipitous ubiquity. I was listening to the, to the White Album, the White Album by the Beatles, once known as the Silver Beatles, known before that as the Quarrymen. So I was listening to the White Album. I was shuffling it, shuffling it out of order. Revolution 9 popped up. Number 9, number 9, which many believe uh, is something, uh, it's about Paul McCartney's death and Billy Shears taking over. You can hear a car crash in there. Don't take my word for it. Just look up Paul is dead. There's a lot of interesting Beatles stuff going on these days. Look up Paul is dead, and you will come across a treasure trove of information, one of which is a documentary, which I I suggest you take a look at it. It's called The Winged Beetle. The Winged Beetle. Check it out. They have quite a few interesting videos that are that that are really <sighs> explode your brain. There's also a the, an, an artist named I Am A Phony, <clears throat> who puts out a lot of great Beatles-type music. Um, mixing in little giblets of Beatles here and there. Check out, yeah, check out, oh, and also, yeah, if, did I just mention Billy's Back, the book, Billy's Back? That's another, that's another doozy. Mind Exploder. Uh, oh, God, it's crazy. So, anyway, I was listening to Number nine, Revolution Nine, <clears throat> and in it they say El Dorado. They say El Dorado. Why is this significant? One might wonder. It's significant because El Dorado is the name of the casino that Yachtly Crew is playing at. El Dorado. In fact, I had just taken a photo of Brew Brothers. Speaking of brew, I'm brewing up another coffee. Just had one. Supposed to meet down there at 8.30. Right now it's 8.11, so I got some time. As Agent Cooper would say, I've only got time for coffee. Only got time for coffee. I used to like coffee, but then once I saw Twin Peaks, and he was obsessed with 
black coffee, black is midnight on a moonlit night. Once I saw that, I realized, you know what, I need to drink, I need to drink this coffee like Agent Cooper did. And there you have it. And then I really, really started enjoying it. So, yeah, I just had to tell you, if you want to check out any of the photos of the uh, documented evidence that I've been taking during this trip, check it out. We've been, I've been, we've been making some really interesting videos. I updated Instagram, and now they got these new functions that you could do down there in your story. Really f interesting, fun things. You can add music. You can do add weird little. Uh, things on your face, you can uh, just all kinds of different stuff. So, yeah, you could check those out on Instagram.com slash Inspirado Projecto. Inspirado Projecto. Mr. Turetsky on here, he, he has made me some great Photoshopped, some great photo edited art pieces that I've uploaded onto the Inspirato Projecto Instagram. So yeah, when I heard when I heard in uh, Revolution 9 when I heard them say El Dorado, I just it just especially since I was just talking about synchronicities to you guys. I was just talking about those and now they're here we go. So I have a feeling this Rainbow Moonstone I brought with me here is going to do it's going, to, it's going to attract even more. Even more. What was... Oh, there, there are a few more on the way up here. There are a few more. There are a few more. They'll come back to me. They'll come back to me. Oh, check this out. This is the sound of the coffee brewing. Here we go. Sounds like it's almost ready to rock. In the meantime, I'm going to put these epaulets, epaulets, epaulets onto the sleeves of my, my shirt here. One of, one of the guys found these little epaulets with, or epaulets with the stripes and then an anchor on it too, which looked really cool. So we might all end up switching over to that at some point. There's always fun stuff evolving. Tonight, well, this is an exclusive for you anchor folks. For you, well, let's just say those who are listening to the podcast. We are now doing the song, Call Me Al. All right? Only one or two audiences so far have heard Call, uh, call Me Al. I'm looking, uh, I'm up in this room, I'm looking across at the Sands Regency. I think there, there was that Sands Hotel out there in Las Vegas, too, isn't there? It says, yeah, this says Sands Regency. These lights up here, wow, dynamite, dynamite, dynamite. So... We're going to get back to you later. We're going to go, you know, i got to get ready. We've got to go play a show. And then what I'll probably do is I'll probably record the sound, sound check again. Can't believe we're going to be doing this in front of... It's just not the best... Um, I'll just say it's not the ideal situation to do sound check in front of an audience. Because you're kind of giving away some surprises. However, at the same time, it is some foreshadowing of what's to come. So, we'll see. We'll see what happens. It's just, we don't prefer to do it.
kind of like it to be a big old surprise. Because it's like... You got the Justice League coming out there. It's like, okay, so imagine the Justice League comes out, and but it's Bruce Wayne, Clark Kent, uh, Diana Prince, what's his name? Hal Jordan? Hal Jordan? The Green Lantern, right? Uh, whoever else is on there. I don't even know if Aquaman has a real name. Yeah, I don't even know if they... I don't even know if Aquaman has a real name. Hmm. Yeah, but... Imagine those guys going out there without their costumes, and then they... Everyone's like, well, that's what you look like without your costume. It's just so much more fun to go out there in the costume. Bam. And then we rock and roll. And then we rock and roll. And roll. Rock and roll. We'll talk to you more later. Does that sound fair? Sounds fair. Sounds fair. Sounds fair to me. All right, can you hear this? So that's, that's Marcy Playground, okay? Marcy Playground. That was one of the others I was going to mention, and now, of course, because of this synchronicity, I have, I completely, that jump-started the memory. <clears throat> so Marcy Playground. I was just fiddling around with the AM station. This is, this is, this is moments after I just talked to you, because uh, I'm about to head down for the sound check. Okay, so we arrived here a earlier today, and we were unpacking and everything, and then Rob, a.k.a. Sailor Hawkins, tells me, he goes, oh, I heard that Marcy Playground is going to play here. And I said, wow, that's really cool. And he goes, not really. And I said, well, I think they're a cool band. I, I've always liked them. And in fact, I had recently, that was the one crazy, that was the crazy synchronicity, is that I had recently... Uh, listened to that album probably four or five days ago. I was listening to it while I was in the shower, and, um, and all of a sudden now I, I hear that uh, that uh, they either had already or were going to play at this at this Brew Brothers. Just blows my mind how this stuff works. All right, I got to get down for a sound check. All right, we are reporting here live in Sparta Projectors, reporting here live from the uh, Yachtly Crew sound check here at Brew Brothers. Uh, Philly Ocean is flipping through the set list right now. Baba Bui has recently set up his camera. We are sure to get some good video of this. Here's a... Uh, here's, uh, Here's a little, here's a little, um, here's a little sound. It's a little sound of the uh, symbol for you. We're now waiting for the sound guy to appear so we can, so we can get, uh, get things rocking and rolling. What's happening? What's going on, Chaz? What? What's he saying? He's saying uh, we got a bunch of stuff in the way. We do? Uh-oh. Okay. Oh, 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 yeah. It's uh, some bags and such. All right. We're going to start this. Uh, listen to the sounds. You're witnessing firsthand the magical fingers of Baba Bui, bassist. Oh boy. So. All right, let's see what happens here. <laughs>
This is pure. I need your glasses already in mine. All right, we are putting, we're putting this on, sure. We're putting this on, uh, oh yeah, go ahead. You might need yours though. You might need mine for what? You might need them. Trust me. For because you can't it's going to be bright down there. You can't sit at a table looking half baked. Oh. They'll pick you out. Oh. Well, I can wear my. Uh, I can wear my. I got some freshies right here. Boom. Here we go. All right. And they let you wear sunglasses at night, yeah, so course. I oh, can not see at night. Okay. Ready? So we we just had our. Well, you're listening. It's brought a projector. We just had our show. We had a wonderful show out here in Reno. I think we've made some wonderful headway. Inspirado Projecto. And what's equally as exciting is that I'm now following David Bowie down to, I'm not sure, I'm following him. He, well, I'm, he's following his inspiration. I'm following him. And we're going to his, um, we're going to um, whatever machine or table or who knows what that, that, that strikes him. He's going to follow his intuition, follow his gut. And uh, so as not to distract him or any of the, the pit bosses or whatever they call them, any of the employees, we, we well, just remember, decided we're going to... Remember, you gotta tell the, you got to tell the fans. Yeah. My whole family is involved in poker. That is incredible. So I mean, I've been, playing, I've been playing cards since I could sit above the table and deal my own, my own deck. Oh, my gosh. My, 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 one, my grandmother's one... Rule was, David, you can play pool if you can reach over the table, and you can play cards if you can reach over the table. Wow. Fact. Wow. Grandma Spangler. And so, you, you, did you learn any special tricks well, was that have helped so you through the years? I was always so pissed off because I always wanted to play. I just wanted to be a part of the family. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't necessarily about the game. Right. About this or it was the cooperation. It was the, the camaraderie was the that was you going on. You have no idea. My parents, my family would argue until they couldn't see straight. Fight over every single card. Oh, my every gosh. Every point. Oh, my gosh. Oh, no, it was brutal. It was, but it was beautiful. And that's why I am the way that I am. You know, I mean, some people might say, you know, Dave Spangler is a fucking asshole. But most people would think of a sweetheart, because guess why? Because I care for everyone else, because I learned how not to be. You do care for everyone. So, you, uh... Um, good is good to catch your case. What did you learn? Well, what's a catch your case? What is that? What's a cashier case? Watch your step. For those who don't know, what's a catch your case? Cash your case is when, uh... You need money. Uh-huh. And you can't draw any more out of your ATM. Oh, so you go to the cashier cage because that way you can get more money. And how? When you how get, when you need big bills, they pay you. That's how they do it. How does that How does that work? If you If you How do they give you How does that happen if you don't have money in your account? Wait, are you saying you're the no one, ATM? No one, no one cares who you are in a casino. Right. You have no personality in the casino. You're a number. Right. You're a fucking dollar, Kurt. Yeah. So, Can I say but Kurt how did? Should I not say Kurt? But that's what I'm wondering is like. Should I, or should I not say Kurt? Oh yeah, you can. Okay. So, but what I want to know Cash is, you. you're okay. So let me get this straight. The ATM machine says, the ATM says, no, you can't take out any more money. The cashier uh, cage is that what you call it? Yep. What? How do they get money for you if your bank won't let you? How do they do that? It's an industry secret. Can't, can't, oh, gotcha. can't share that. Okay, sorry. So people they, out there who gamble, they know. They know. They know. Okay. Hang on. So I'm... Let me get out of your way. Right here? 
Oh, perfect. Look, I found it. Okay. <laughs> I gravitated right to it. You did? I didn't even know. Now, they're not going to let you record this, so you got to stand okay. back. Okay. Stop it. Stop. I'll be, stop the, stop. I'll be standing here. I'm not going to stand next to you. All right, so he went to a cashier cage. He's going to the cashier cage. I don't know what this means. He says anyone who gambles knows what this means. So um, I'm trying to present something to you that you might not know about and, and maybe, you know, something that could possibly educate you. So we'll see. I, I never knew that David Spangler grew up in a family that that gambled all the time. I never knew that. I never knew that. Nor did I realize that he was such a a lover of gambling. Never knew that. Never knew that. So this is some, another interesting interesting new thing that I'm learning. I don't know. How do you how does that happen? If you if your ATM doesn't let you take out any more money out of your out of your uh, account how how do, how do, how if you yourself cannot take money out how does another entity take that money out? I guess if you grew up in this, you're going to know all the little in, intricate things. I have a feeling that if I spent enough time, I could learn the art of, of these games from David Spangler, a.k.a. David Bowie. Feeling. Oh my god, I haven't heard this song in eons. Only team familiar yet, I can seem to place it. Wow. So yeah, he's at the cashier cage right now. Somehow these, these wizards are working their magic. Getting, getting the, the money together. Now, while that's happening, I just want to say, tonight's show felt really good. It felt really good. There were probably about 50 people there. But that doesn't matter. It's not about the quantity. It's about the quality. We heard some wonderful things from these people afterwards. And they were talking about, like one person said, oh my gosh, you know, uh, there are only about five rotating bands out in Reno that just, over and over, they play out here. We would love to have you guys out here. They said there are no yacht rock bands out here. That's awesome. That's awesome. I would love to play Reno. I mean, you know, when you hear about Reno, it's like, it just sounds like a, I don't know why, but for some reason it sounds like a joke, like a joke to me, like a punchline. And I'm not trying to make fun of Reno, but it's just something that, that's what I connotate with it, is I've heard various folks talk about Reno in that fashion throughout the years, so I, I think about it in that fashion, just this funny joke. For instance, uh, there's a guy out there named Don Pai. He's like a, an announcer, an MC. He 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 says he's from Reno. I never knew what that meant. I always thought that Reno was like the poor man's version of Las Vegas or something. But it's got its it's got its own charm. It's got its own stuff going on. It's 
so intriguing. Um, so, back to the show. The folks who were from out here, who worked here, there was a guy who said, you guys were fantastic. And then his little lady friend said, oh yeah, he, you know, uh, you, you, you know, he he means what he's saying because he's he's not impressed by any bands at all. He's not impressed with the, uh, any bands. And he's just, you know, he's not impressed with any bands. So when you hear that from someone... That's pretty cool. Then uh, there's a, a gal and her friend, and they're over here for some kind of bicycle convention situation. And but they're they live out like in San Luis Obispo, and they were saying that they don't have any yacht rock bands out there, and they think that we would do really well out there. And she claimed that she had connections and that she. She could get us into various music venues, which would be phenomenal. You never know when you play one of these shows. You never know. I mean, anything in life. I'll just use this this Yachtly Cruise as an example. You never know what those unknown circumstances are. There's no way to know about the unknown circumstances because they're unknown. So, by trusting in the unknown, you've trusted in the all that is. By trusting in the all that is, that's a better bet than any bet on anything ever that you could play or whatnot for anything. So just intriguing. So okay, so he's looking for a place to to play right now. Once he finds a table, or once he finds a, a, a spot to to play, I, I'm gonna stop this just because they just so they they don't get nervous. So looks like he found his uh, crap. Uh, it looks like he found his craps table, so I'm gonna. They're gonna give you shit about holding that phone. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop it. So there you go, folks. There you go. He's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna uh, do his, he's gonna do his thing, and we're gonna shut this off and watch it happen. So it's 2.52 a.m. I might have misspoke. I'm laying on the bed. I might have misspoke before when I said it was the 20th. I think it was the 19th. Yeah, we played on the 19th. Now it's the 20th. I need to get to sleep. Uh, I left David Bowie in there gambling. I mean, he was... He was betting like three hundred dollars at a time. Uh, you know what? That's this as far as I'm gonna go into that. However, here's another synchronicity that I gotta say before I describe and then title and then upload this podcast. Another interesting synchronicity. Okay, so during the Mammoth trip with the Outley crew, we saw a truck on fire completely on fire and apparently it was an onion truck uh, apparently it was an onion truck I was looking at these little things they look like little tiny pumpkins and then uh, and Tommy later said something to the effect of He said something later uh, to the effect of on uh, Instagram. He said, oh, we were driving behind you guys. Oh, my gosh, that was an onion truck that was on fire. You can see the video of it 
on Instagram, if you go to Inspirato Projecto on Instagram, and then, I guess yesterday, the 19th, on the way out here to Reno, we, uh, again, I documented, we saw something on fire on the side of the road. It was another truck coming out here to Reno. Was another was it another onion truck? I do not know. It was smoking big time. We saw fire trucks coming up, just like we did on the other one. Everything that happens in our life is 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 a symbol. Everything going on in our life is a symbol. It's a symbol. It's a symbolic representation of what the actual thing is. For instance, I could look up this painting on the wall here. And see that it's just this wide open landscape. wide open landscape. I've been seeing a lot of wide, yeah, a lot of wide open landscape lately, uh, between going up to June Lake and then also on the way up to, uh, on the way up to Reno. Looks like I got about 16% here of battery. Uh, gambling is such an interesting thing because you know that you're being watched by all these different cameras. You got the pit boss in there watching what's going on. There's certain rules, regulations. And then these guys that got a little... Uh, what is it? A little computer thing that that uh, a little computer thing that tells the dealer where to deal, who to deal to first, and then these cards spit out of a machine, and uh, the prankster in me, the mischievous hoaxer in me, wants to say, you know, you can't, you cannot, how should I put it, hoaxers see other hoaxers, they see the signs, they see them, pranksters know what other pranksters are doing, Ugh. So I'm looking at this and I'm going, you guys, you've devised, you've devised this crazy method and you know what you're doing. You know what you're doing. You know what you're doing. It's like the Academy Awards and... What makes these like really good films really good films is like if you if you can impress let's say okay if one magician can impress another magician you know that that magician is really 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 good because they they're able to hide all of these little tiny things that the other magician Uh, they're able to hide what the other magician would know what to look for. Tricks, tricks of the trade. Same thing with film. If you could trick 
another filmmaker into appreciating your film where they're just mystified by it, then you know, that's awesome. The average person watching it, you know, they 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 won't know what to look for. They will know, they will know what to look for. Oh, guys, I'm going to sleep now. We're already at an hour, so I'm going going to sleep. We'll do some more podcasting tomorrow on the way back from Reno. How about that? We'll see what happens. Or tomorrow, I guess today, that's today. It's 3 a.m. right now. Oh, my God. We have to, we broke down all the equipment. We left it up on stage. We got to get down there at 9.30 a.m. Grab all that equipment. Get get it the hell out of there before 10 a.m. So that's, that's our mission. Or today. That's our all day. Today, man. I hope the best for David Bowie. And he comes back with thousands of dollars. That's what I hope for. There's a girl downstairs who sat next to us while we were playing Pai Gao, I think. She's like, oh my gosh, you're... You guys, the Yacht Rock guys. I just saw you at Brew Brothers. Uh... She's very apologetic for everything. You know, those people are like, sorry, oh, sorry, sorry, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. She's one of those kind of folks. She had that kind of personality. And then you just either, A, you just leave it. You just kind of let it just dangle out there. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Or you could say, oh, no, 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 that's all right. No, 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 that's all right. Oh, no, no, that's all right. No, no, that's all right. Oh, no, no, that's all right. Oh, no, that's all right. Oh, no, that's all right. Oh, no, that's all right. Okay. No, 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 that's all right. No. No, 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 don't worry about it. No, that's all right. No. Nope, that's all right. No, don't worry about it. No, 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 that's that's cool. No, don't worry about it. No, no, you don't have to apologize. You don't have to apologize. No, you don't have to apologize. So with one of those kinds of folks, it, you know, you're in that position. You're in that position. So she thought the dealer was bad luck. When we first sat down, we had a sweet little Asian girl Asian woman it was just really nice and we just sat down and then all of a sudden a new dealer comes in these people who are in charge of the gambling stuff they know they know about rapport they know about I'm not even going to say luck they know about that spiritual like connection that can happen so they try to break it however they can it's interesting to see the behaviors of these people who work here there's a certain mindset that's that's there and uh could you imagine growing up in las vegas or reno a gambling town like that you know going to college to learn about this stuff I wonder if any of those people go in and they gamble themselves. And how many of them there are. And then they send in those people called the coolers. The coolers. I saw that movie, William H. Macy. They just sound like they're down on their luck. You know, uh, you know they're just downtrodden. So they throw, screw up the vibe of the person betting. If it's all about chance and it's all about odds and probabilities, then why should they have to? Why should why should they have to change hands of a dealer? Why should they have to send in a cooler? It's because they know there's something deeper to it. Something deeper to it. I'll leave I'll leave you with that. 
time for me to go to bed. I got to drink a tall glass of water. I'm going to go to bed. I had three shots of tequila. These people brought up tequila for us. Someone did. I don't know. Not everybody drank their tequila. I drank three shots of tequila. And then I drank a Kevin Coke. Ah. So I'm going to drink a lot of water. A lot of water. We'll talk to you more later. Take care. Sleep well.